you, Lord, for loving us most. Thank you for loving us first. Thank you for loving us last, Father. From beginning to end, you are there. You are there in the middle. You are there through it all. And we just can't do anything more than say thank you, Lord, and praise you for all that you've done. Oh, Lord. We worship Him. Thank you, God. Thank you for leading us in worship. Thank you for leading us in truth. Thank you for leading us in the spirit. Lord, we just praise you. Thank you. Oh,
with, in your, in your, with your boss, with your workplace. You see, the things that we practice now, mm-hmm. in the testing now, yeah. will develop our faith for the future. Yeah. James 1, through, uh, 2 through 4 says, Consider pure joy, brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials or testing of your faith. Because the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Perseverance to its full effect makes you mature and complete, lacking in nothing. Yeah. Lacking in nothing. It's in these moments of testing in my life that I can go, man, yeah, I can go for grades. I can, I can go for just trying to get by, or I can work on the hard stuff. I can work on the things that God wants to develop in each and every one of us. You know, um, I have a great example of that um, in my dad. Amen. And I can assure you, my dad did not tell me to say this. It's going to put out there. <laughs> My dad is the most integrous man I know. And a lot of preachers, I've heard stories and stories of preachers that live double lives. You can tell me my dad's not that man. I'm so thankful for a man of God who can stand with honesty and love in times where truth is relevant. Mm. Mm. In times where it's easier to cheat, it's easier to lie. But a man of God who stands on his two feet and steps up into the calling that God has for him. Mm. See, it's men like my father, it's men like me, in places of darkness and we can stand and we can be a light because it's not only affecting our future mm-hmm. but it's affecting the future of all the people that are watching us yeah. there are so many people watching you they're going to see what you do Billy Grant once said it this way courage is contagious when a brave man takes a stand The spines of others are often stiffened. I believe God is calling every one of us to take a stand today. To take a stand, whether it be in school, or at work, or in the church. To take a stand of integrity. To stand for the things God has for you to stand in in this time. Especially in a time like this. Amen. Would you pray for us? Yes. Would you pray for us? Yes. Father God, lift all our hearts to you. We are all one accord here today. We are all one heart. And we have one desire as a church. And that is to praise you. That is to stand on your word. To lift up our hands worship and to continue in the things that you have for us, Lord Jesus. To be constantly renewing our mind every day with your word. To not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be in daily transformation every day. And I pray for transformation in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. And I thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good testimony. All right, so this part's a little weird for me here. Thank you for that testimony, Josiah. That was awesome, man. Good job, man. Good job, Dave. That's, man, God has definitely blessed you and did a blessing in Josiah. Um, yeah, this part's a little weird because I have to come up and announce myself. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm going to do this. I'm just going to give God the glory for giving me the opportunity to come up here and stand before you gentlemen. Amen. All right. So God be glorified. All right. So we're talking about integrity. 
Um, I got kind of curious since me and the pastor was talking about what we were going to do for this men's meal on integrity. I decided to actually delve into that word of integrity and look up what it was. So I kind of had an idea of what the Bible said integrity was, but I wanted to see what our old brother Webster had to say about it. And it was kind of interesting the way he broke it down. So I'm going to share that with you real quick. Um, he breaks it down three ways. He says it's a firm adherence to a code of especially moral or artistic values. Then he hyphenates it with incorruptibility. Mm. His second one was an, an unimpaired condition, hyphenated soundness. The third one was the quality or state of being, complete or undivided, hyphenated completeness. So he took three words and came up with three different definitions of it. Incorruptibility, soundness, completeness. And I said, Lord, what is it that, I, I see what he's getting at, but what are you getting at with this? So I went and looked, up, looked it up in the Old Testament. The Hebrew, the Hebrew word for integrity is, I'm a, I'm, Steve, don't, don't, don't kill me, I might tear this up, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's tuma. And the way the Bible defines that word is, it's the condition of being without blemish, completeness, there's that one word, mm -hmm. perfection, sincerity, soundness, there's the second one. <laughs> Uprightness and wholeness. Hmm. Then I went back and looked in the New Testament to see what Jesus says about it. The way the New Testament defines it is honesty and adherence to a pattern of good works. And I was like, man, who is it in my life that looks like that? Who is it that's been walking beside me this whole time that gives us this picture of this biblical word, integrity, that someone in the secular world, world tried to break down for us. All my roads led back to Jesus. Jesus is our perfect example of a man of integrity. And then it led me to another point. Have I been matching up to the standard of integrity that Jesus hmm. has laid out for me? Hmm. And I have to take a real deep and hard search in my life and thought about the times where my integrity was on the line. Where does my integrity reflect what God wants in my life to reflect to my sons, to my co-workers, to my brothers, to my brothers that I stand before all the time? And there were some instances in my life that was questionable. Um, there was one. This one really hit me hard because this is like when I first started walking with Jesus. And I really didn't, wasn't getting into all the ways of Jesus, but I knew one thing, I really loved him. There was nothing I wanted to do to the search his name, but I didn't think I was doing it. It was something as simple as just driving around without a driver's license. <laughs> and I drove like that for years, bragged about it, was happy about it, flaunted it, never got pulled over, nothing like that. But yet, there, I didn't realize that there were eyes on me watching me do this. Mm -hmm. You know, and it wasn't just my integrity. You know, and I realized how wrong I was, especially when I just started off, started walking with the Lord. When someone came and dropped Romans 2 in my, on top of my desk at work, you know, and I was like, what, what do you mean by this? So I went and looked it up. And Romans 2 said, you then, who teach another. And guess what, man? You're all teaching somebody, whether or not you know it. Right. All right? So you're accountable for this. You then, who teach another. Don't you teach yourself? You who preach. You must not steal. Do you steal? You who say you must not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who detest idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law, do you dishonor God? <laughs> do you dishonor God by breaking the law? For it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among Gentiles because of you. That one bore a hold in my heart. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason why is because when I turned around, and gave my life to Christ. I began not to boast the things of wickedness that I used to do. But I began to boast in what the Lord was doing in me. And I had a lot of unbelievers around me at my job. A lot of believers around me that I used to hang out with. That knew my old life. They didn't know the life that Jesus was forming in me. Until this one time, a friend of mine came and dropped this on me. And it hit me. The Lord that I profess, that I confess, that I love, mm. I am blaspheming his name in front of unbelievers, in front of those who are, who are following me because of the things that I am doing 
that I don't think anybody pays attention to. Yep. And that tore me up. It tore me up and broke my heart in that because there were people on my job who were mocking, not me. They weren't mocking me. They were mocking my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. and, I was, and it broke my heart because I was the cause of that. Because of the fact that I used to boast that I was driving around without a license. I used to boast that I was getting away with this and that and never getting caught. Not realizing that I was blaspheming the name of the Lord in front of them and causing them to blaspheme the name of the Lord. Saying, well, if this is what a Christian looks right. like, then I don't need to be one. Because right. he's doing the same thing that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And even worse in some cases. And that tore me up. So I said, Lord, how do I fix this? Make a simple fix. Go get your driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> so I got the driver's license. And man, stuff, more and more things in my life started lining up after that point. I didn't realize that I was being my own block, mm -hmm. my own blocking to my own blessings that the Lord was pouring out to me, all for the simple fact that I wasn't walking in integrity of yep. what I was speaking. Yep. Right? Man, we have to, have to walk in what we talk, especially among this world today. We live in a world right now that has forgotten what the idea of integrity is yep. looking like. Yep. You know, we, we rely on Webster or Google to tell us what integrity is. But we have living examples because Christ lives in each and every one of us telling us, hey, this is the way to walk. Guiding us and saying, if you walk by me, you're going to walk in this integrity here. Mm -hmm. It's just so amazing in that, that that one simple thing is, you know, not having a driver's license and people knowing my whole life. How dare you mock my Lord and God because of me? Mm -hmm. Am I constantly going to be the point of mockery? You guys have seen it in the news today where the church is being mocked because of the way people who profess Christ are acting nowadays. That's not what the Lord wants right. for us. That's not what the Lord wants us, how the Lord wants us to represent him. You know, one other instance though, and I learned that walking, walking close to Jesus is going to cost you. It's going to cost you some things. It may cost, and sometimes it may cost you a job. It's going to cost you some friends. It's going to cost you some family members. But guess what? The rewards out of that from walking into that charity and walking beside Jesus is going to be so much greater. Um, I have this one other instance at work. And this is just recently here. Where, you know, I hope, uh, and I hope nobody is watching from work on this. I'm not trying to put that out there. But I'm going to put it out there anyway. All right. So, you know, everybody, how, how most jobs give you a, a lunch break, right? You know, how would they give us a 30 minute lunch break? You know, and what we were doing at the time, and I didn't realize that we weren't supposed to be doing this, and then when I did, I continued to do it. Um, we were actually not clocking out for our lunch break, but we were going out an hour, hour and a half, even though they only give us 30 minutes, and still getting paid for not being on the job while we were on lunch. Once again, here I am at work witnessing, professing Christ, but yet, I'm still in time. Mm. Something that belongs to God anyway. And here I am, I'm still in time. Mm. Before people I'm trying to witness to at work. So once again, Holy Spirit got on me. You know, he said, you're walking with me, right? I was like, yes, Lord, I'm walking with you. You're walking with me, right? Yes, Lord, I'm walking with you. He said, then why are you still in time that I'm already, I've already given you? Mm. I said, oh, mm. Lord. Mm. Again. He said, how are you professing me before them? And you're still in time just like they are. Where's your integrity at in that? Yep. I said, Lord, you're right. And the great thing about our Lord, he's so gracious to me. When he points stuff out, man, don't hesitate. Repent, repent of it right away. Ask for forgiveness. Don't try to hide it. Don't try to cover it up. Don't try to sugarcoat it. Because he's right there with you anyway. He just wants to deal with it and just shape and mold you into his walk that he's already walking for you. So I repented to Jesus about it. And I went to my supervisors and managers and told them, look, hey, all right, you gave me the whole break now. Look, this is what I've been doing. I'm not doing it anymore. They said, all right, fine. Don't do it. Then they asked me, who else has been doing this? <laughs> and I said, look, I'm not going to put everybody else under the bus. I'm just going to tell you, if you go back and look, you'll find out. You know, but this is me. I'm coming to you and letting you know. And they didn't write me up. They didn't suspend me or anything like that. 
they turned around and put me in charge of a million and a half dollar project. <laughs> All because I came back and showed that integrity of what I, what I was doing that was wrong and came back and confessed that to them. So I confessed it to the Lord first, but then Lord, the Lord directed me and guided me to go and make it right for them. And I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, I was afraid. I was afraid that this good job that I just had, I was going to lose because I was a thief. I'm still in something as simple as time, something that simple that God gives all of us. And they turned around and rewarded me for that honesty that I was showing. So man, don't be afraid. Don't, don't be afraid to walk in that integrity. Sometimes you're going to have to be faced with situations that you're going to have to go into and just speak the God honest truth about what's happening. And it's going to cost you. But in the long run, in the turnaround, God is going to reward you because you're honoring his name. You're glorifying his name. You're magnifying his name by the way that you live your life in front of not only your family, not only in front of your church, but in front of those who don't believe, those who want to stub their nose at God. God will bless you for walking in uprightness. God will bless you for walking in integrity. All right? And if you don't believe it, I'm going to leave you with this little part right here because it is challenging. It is challenging to live in this world. 1 Peter 3, 13 through 18 gives, gives this encouragement. I'm going to leave this with you before I bring up our next person. Who is going to harm you if you're eager to do good? But if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats, do not be frightened, but in your heart revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks, actually give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak malice maliciously against you, your good behavior in Christ, may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if God's will to suffer, for if it's God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sin, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but it made alive in the spirit. To live with, the made alive in the spirit. To live with integrity is to follow the example of Christ, and we can only live with true integrity by His power, which He graciously, give, he graciously and freely gives to all of us who are His. Yes. Mm -hmm.
people can learn to trust what I say. That gives me some street cred. Yep. How, how many of you know that? Yep. How many of you know that? Mm -hmm. It gives me a chance to make a difference. And this, this is huge, guys. This is huge. If I carry integrity, I have found that the words that I say can, create, can, can carry great power. Mm -hmm. You hear this? Yep. They can have great power. That my words, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to lift myself up. Remember, walk, walk with humility with this. But remember that your words have power. Mm -hmm. Your words and your actions can, can therefore, if you carry integrity around, they can bring healing to where there is pain. You can bring peace to where there's chaos. Yep. You can bring light to darkness. And why? Because people know that you're bringing the truth. Yep. That you're bringing the truth. Yep. You can bring truth to where there is little truth. So in just in closing, I want, I want to be a man who can be trusted. A man of integrity. Amen. Amen. Ricky Webb, though, everybody give him a hand.
This next line is important. He said, I won't be formed by feelings. It's critical. If we have time. He said, but I'll hold fast to what is true. Now listen to this. If the cross brings transformation, that's what we're looking for. To, to get to a place of integrity requires transformation. Because I can promise you, Andrew was talking about and Antonio. You weren't taught integrity as a kid. You didn't. You didn't learn that. You learned the opposite. Your kids, your toddlers. You know what you do? They say, "This is mine. I'm not doing this." One of the first words kids learn is what? No. no. You weren't taught this. And so what we do is. And I think so much of the gospel has just been presented wrong. And we think, God, God just, I want to accept you. But, but there's an exchange. And what happens is to get to the place where we all in our hearts really want to be. Then this next line is important. Because that only comes through transformation. And it says, if the cross brings transformation, then hang me there with you. Then the Bible said, be crucified with Christ. Come on. But you can't be crucified with Christ and still maintain your way. Just listen to this. Death is the doorway to resurrection life. If I join you in your sufferings, I join you in your rise. So I want to challenge you before we get into the end part of this. There are a lot of reasons why, and I was writing some of this back there, there are, some, there are a lot of reasons why people are Christians. A lot of reasons. Some people don't want to go to hell. Some people want a better life. A lot of, there's, there are a lot of reasons people follow Jesus. But very few people follow him for relationships. Critical. Christianity is far more about becoming than it is getting. It's far, far more about what you become rather than what you get. Because just like this song's talking about, we're talking about integrity. The only way to be to, to be integrous is through death. That's it. Because the contrary of that is self-centeredness. Right? So every compromise we mentioned in this room so far with everybody that spoke, what was the center of every compromise? Me. Self. Right? Self-centered carries self-consciousness. And so what happens, we walk in a self-centered Christian life and it carries a self-consciousness. So what we carry is condemnation that we weren't intended to carry. We carry discouragement that we were never created to carry. We carry disappointments and we carry all these things because we still haven't died. We've, we've given Christ permission to save us. We've asked Him to come in but we haven't given up. We haven't given up. And so what happens is we keep trying. I've talked to a lot of people that say, I'm trying to be a good person. But listen, when you learn about becoming, when you really get it, you, you use the word repent. 
You know what repent means? You know what that really means? A lot of people think it just means to, t- to change direction, to turn around, to be sorry for what you did. No, actually, if you break that word, it's two words, re and pen. You know what re means? To return to see again. You know what pen means? A higher call. So actually the word repent means to go back and see things from a higher perspective than what you're seeing. Because I can promise you, if you saw things from God's perspective, your decisions in your life will be far different than they are. Repent, higher call. Penthouse is never on the ground level. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Right? Yeah. Penthouse is on top. But we live a life where we try and we strive to be a Christian. And that's not the way it was intended to be. Integrity is about becoming. What what will it cost you? This this death I'm talking about. What it'll cost you? It'll cost you everything that you were never created to be. That's what it'll cost you. But you can choose to walk out of that door and you can hold on to it. Or there can be a divine exchange. And you can you can die now. I mean, baptism, we talk about it. We have all these symbols. Paul says, if I live, it's in Christ. I've died to myself. So what happens is, we, we hear integrity. And a lot of people want it. But a lot of people never reach it. Line. 
सकते हैं
So if there's been areas in your life tonight when you have, where you have lacked integrity, you know that the other people know them. Let's repent. And if you've repented, then I want you to... I'm going to ask you to take a bold thing, guys. You don't have to say what it is, but if there's any, if there's an area in your life where you are carrying any kind of shame, tonight before you go, I want you to do just, just do a knee tap at the altar. And, and you can do that as long as you want. It can be one second, or it can be 30 minutes. Do a knee tap and say, I'm walking out of here without the shame. If there's an area of integrity that you've lacked, then I tell you what, get it done with tonight. If there's an area where we walk in in shame, leave it at the altar. If there's an area where you need somebody to stand with you tonight, we're going to minister to one another. This is the way we're going to end tonight. We're going to minister to one another. And I want to just encourage you. Just be vulnerable. Just be, we're men here. You know what? We struggle with a lot of the same things, guys. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And, that, and most guys, if they're honest, are going to say, you know what, I've been down that road, I'm on that road, or I'm struggling with that road. Let me just say, okay? We're men. We all got testosterone. Okay? So, if you wish to just, just please, I want you to begin to pray one for another. I want you to just, maybe in, in this evening, you, you spotted somebody and you're like, man, I just got a, I got a word for them. Would you just go and get just finish them?
in it from our Father because He was always in it. And I feel like if somebody did that, that you carry that excuse and you give an anger a permission to reside in your heart and in your life because your excuse and it's been a lie that you just believe and you say, well, my my granddaddy was angry. My daddy was angry all the time. And it's just in my nature. I inherited it from my father. If that's you, raise your hand. Anybody else? Duran, would you come up and pray for Mike? Anybody else? Look 
become satisfied. I feel like God is saying that there's somebody here that in a room full of people. You're lonely. And you're lonely because you feel that you don't know that you're up.
We're just saying, I won't rely on feelings. We become love. And what that means, you become it. It's an apple tree. You produce apples. You become love. That's all that anybody else sees. Your wife doesn't see anything else because you're an apple tree. All you can produce is apples. Amen. Christianity is becoming love. That's all you can produce. Not because what he did, but it's because who you are in Christ. If I'm talking to you about relationships, about kids, raise your hand right now.
walk out of here and are not changed. It's nobody's fault but your own. I, I just, guys, I want to just encourage you in every day of your life, we can have time in the presence of the Lord and be changed every day. I love getting together corporately like this. There's a synergy that happens. And it's when, you know, Jesus goes with us back to our house. Amen. And, and so would you just take him with you as you go in your cars all the way, as you get up, you know, church is open tomorrow. I think our churches are open tomorrow. I go, yeah, you know, you can see it and see it there. Bring the presence of the Lord with you.